A little over two hours into our live stream with the GoPro Hero 10. Checking the screen temperature. Shows it at 119 degrees Fahrenheit. Inside the battery bay, 128.3. We do have a little bit of evening sun. I own the best GoPro ever made, but will it stream? The somewhat obvious answer is yes, it will stream. It's not hard to make it do it. Open up the app, hit live stream, put in your credentials, and you'll be streaming in no time. The question that keeps coming up, though, is how do I get it to keep streaming without overheating? With attention being turned to the Hero 11, GoPro users are wondering what kind of upgrades are coming. What will be better about the next version of the GoPro Action Camera? And I'm over here just wondering, can I get it to stream for more than 13 minutes without it overheating? Because so far, that's about what it's given, maybe 20 minutes, but it doesn't take long for the GoPro Hero 8, GoPro Hero 10, the two I have closest access to. It doesn't take long for either one of those to overheat once you start asking them to live stream. But is there a secret to making the GoPro be able to stream for an hour, two hours? maybe even three hours? Yes, yes there is. And it may be as simple as pulling that battery out. What if I told you you could remove the Hero battery and solve a lot of the GoPro Hero's overheating issues? Well, it's just about that simple. This weekend I have conducted a heat test indoor and outdoor for both my GoPro Hero 10 and my GoPro Hero 8. The test was pull the battery out, mount it on a magnet mount, adjustable arm, available for purchase at jdubhoffman.com slash merchandise if you're interested. Hook it up to an external battery block and see how long we can get it to stream. I've done this test with the GoPro Hero 10 connected to my iPad. Then I restarted the test with my GoPro Hero 8, also connected to my iPad. I then tried an outdoor test in the heat, so to speak. Not in direct sunlight necessarily, but outside. Low 90s was the temperature during the test, and I did the same. I connected my GoPro Hero 10 to my iPad, then I connected my GoPro Hero 8 to my iPad. I checked it every 15 minutes for the first little while to make sure we weren't going to lose the stream. Then I would check it every 30 minutes and then every hour. 70 degrees at the screen. 109.4. My results were very encouraging. But before I get to that, I do have one little caveat. As I tried to connect my GoPro Hero 10 to my iPhone, it would start the stream and then after about 10 seconds, kick it off, saying the server had stopped the stream. Never could get it to finish a stream. Connected to my iPad, I did not have the same trouble. Now, I'll also say on the Hero 10, there is an update available and I can't make it update, either connected to my iPad or my iPhone. So maybe that update fixed a bug that was, that was present and I just haven't seen the results of that yet. So, the results of the indoor test did prove at, you know, 70 some odd degrees inside, I was able to stream for a full three hours with the GoPro Hero 8, and I was able to stream for a full three hours with the GoPro Hero 10. Our temperature ranges checked at the screen and just inside the battery bay stayed a little over 100 degrees at the screen and anywhere from 110 to 120 degrees inside the battery bay. So an indoor test was successful. Cha-ching! Next came the outdoor test. Again, the battery has been removed. We're hooked to an external power bank. About that external power bank, it has to provide 5 volts, 2 amps of power. That's the requirement GoPro has on it. I have several battery banks. I have a 26,800 milliamp hour battery bank that I use for a lot of different projects. 
and it does give 5 volt 2 amps out of one of its ports, 5 volt 1 amp out of the other port. But the 5 volt 2 amps from that particular battery bank would not power my GoPro Hero 10. I would connect it, it would start up, but it would immediately give me the message, not enough power, GoPro will shut off in so many words. So I changed to a different battery bank, one that also on its information sheet says it provides five volts, two amps, and I plugged it into the two amp side. Again, would not work. Brought out my ElectJet graphene infused battery, 10,000 milliamp hour, plugged it into the USB-A side, which is supposed to give five volt, two amp, and it wouldn't either. So the one source I had left was the same battery block, but with the USB-C port. As I connected USB-C to USB-C on the GoPro, this one did finally power the GoPro Hero 10 so that I was successful in having an exterior battery to use for that particular test. Now, again, this is not necessarily going to be in sunlight. Towards the end of the test for the GoPro Hero 10, I did finally get some sunlight it, temperature in the low 90s, sunlight on the face of the camera, and it did raise the temperatures a little bit, but I did not have an overheating issue that shut off my stream prior to three hours. So as Kendall Gray would say, way too deep in his videos, long story short, yes, Yes, it is just as simple as pulling the battery out of your GoPro Hero 8 or 10 so that your overheating issues can be resolved. Apparently, charging the battery and asking it to stream at the same time generates way too much heat and the internal protection shuts down the GoPro before it damages itself, which is a good feature to have. But if we'll pull that battery out of the battery bay, then airflow can move around. It can cool itself better and we get a longer successful stream. Three hours is plenty of time for most youth sporting events, for most events, period. So the GoPro, like everybody hopes it would be, is going to be a viable option for streaming. It'll connect to Sideline HD. You can run it with Game Changer. There are great options for using the GoPro Hero 8, Hero 10 as your main streaming device.